Hey everybody. All right, so um, I'm starting a tutorial today. This is called Acrylic Pouring Kiss Pour, K-I-S-S -S Pour. Um, for those of you that have just started, um, definitely know that you can reuse a canvas. Uh, this canvas, I totally hated the pour and I, I immediately disliked it, so I went outside, rinsed it off with um, the hose, and let it dry for a couple weeks. And um, I've just, I don't think you need to let it dry that long. It's just that I wasn't going to do anything this big until I did another tutorial. And my tutorial yesterday uh, didn't save because I only had uh, a little bit of battery. So today I've got 52% battery and we're going to give it a go. So today I have a canvas. This canvas was bought as a part of a, I think a four or six pack for $10. Um, so I have multiple canvases. Um, I'm going to be using black, white, um, gold, a black metallic, and a silver. And today, uh, the pour, typically, if you've ever seen me, what I do is I'm pouring in a circle. Um, today, I'm actually going to take two cups, and you won't be able to see this very well, but I have a solid color in one cup and multiple colors in the other cup, and the point is to pour them at the exact same time so that the colors are creating a waterfall together and then sliding down the canvas and that has to be held very steady. Um, and then you lift it off and then lay your canvas back flat because right now I've got it on an angle because um, I want this to kind of puddle down the canvas and then I'm gonna tilt it. Right now what I've got is a, uh, a layer of wet paint. Just use the colors that you have the most of that are the cheapest for you to buy, which um, happen to be a beige that I picked up and my black and white. So those are usually my bottom colors, and by the time I tip and tilt, um, it's either all gonna be gone or I'm gonna end up filling in with colors that I want to go around this design, depending on how much I spread it. Other tools that you need besides your paint are cups. Publix sells these little cups for, I think it's $1.99. Um, they're about the cheapest that you can get. I also pick up, you can get like a thousand popsicle sticks for five bucks so that you can mix your paints. You can also use, uh, I see some of the YouTube artists use the end um, of one of their brushes and then they just wipe it every time, which is smart, it saves money. But use one that's already painted so that it's easier to get the paint off. This happened to be a free one that I got. Um, and it is not painted so it doesn't wipe down as easily. Uh, I also use my torch. That's to get any bubbles out of the paint. A lot of times when you're mixing these before, um, before you pour them into the individual cups because you mix them with Floetrol, which is a paint thinner. Excuse me, um, it helps leveling. It's used in uh, for commercial use in painting and, and spray machines. Uh, but we use it at about a 50-50 ratio or sometimes two parts Floetrol to one part paint, depending on the look you're going for. Right now, everything is about two parts Floetrol, one part paint, except for the silver, it's about 50-50. Um, because it needs to be a little bit thicker. Uh, the gold, the gold tends to be pretty thick on its own, so this is definitely a two to one, and this is the consistency you want. It needs to look like honey. Let me check the camera real quick. See how we're doing here. Okay, there we go. Put that more in frame. Okay, so again, back to things that you need. Canvas, multiple paints, flow trowel, torch for getting rid of bubbles, um, torch lighter or stick lighter. And then I use my hands for a lot of things, uh, but you might want to use gloves. It does wash up really easily, um, so it's up to you. So I am pouring um, this in, and as I was showing in the other tutorial, which if you didn't catch it live, let's show you how to do it. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. So when you're pouring, if you don't want your colors to mix very much, if you tip the cup and then pour your other paint so that it glides down the side of the cup, it will help keep your paints in layers. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do all of them like this to where I'm just tipping on the side. Um, the higher you pour, if the cup was flat, the further it would push the paint into the layer below it. It would mix the paint and I do that a lot. It works well for many things. But this specific pour, I want all of them to go in as gently as possible um, so that you get more defined rings as it comes out. 
And if you're on, please say, say hello. I, I may not be able to answer you just because of the way my phone's set up. I don't have anything professional um, set up. It's actually a bunch of zip ties on a camera um, tripod. Um, so again, just doing some more layering here. And you just repeat it however you want. That's the great thing about this. Um, if you like, if you, you know, like multiple colors, put in multiple colors. If you only like two, put that on silent, but I don't know. So for this much canvas, and we won't even worry about that, that's going to end up sliding right down the, the, um, the canvas here. So don't even have to worry about any of the colors that are on the canvas. It's all going to go away. Now, as I'm getting deeper in the cup, I'm going to have to tip it back a little bit. But I am going to need a pretty good amount of paint for this size. I'm working with uh, one of my paint friends, and we're going to be doing, a, well, actually she's doing a class at her church. I'm trying to get people to come to it. It's out in Callahan. Um, December 9th. It is a fundraiser. Uh, for $25, you get um, you get your supplies, and you're also helping out a family because the church is buying the supplies. Um, so that money goes towards a family that's really in need. So if you guys uh, have some time, want to do a pouring class on Sunday, December 9th at 3, please say something in the comments, and I'll be happy to get that information to you. And again, this this is my first test of this type of pour, so it may not come out well. We're getting ready to find out. All right, so let me pour a bunch of this white into a cup. Normally I would pour it right out of this bottle, but I don't want any breaks in the pour. And if there are any globs in your paint, and the, the globs can come from the Floetrol um, or your paint. If there's a bunch of air in your bottle, it will uh, make a skin. So let's see if we have any comments already so here we go and again I'm pouring this at the same time in order to be able to have two different waterfalls touching each other you absolutely want the the actual paint flow coming out of each one to touch so that it forms this design This is actually pretty difficult to maintain. I'm probably going to have to find a tool that does this. I do actually see angel wings coming out. If you guys have ever heard of that, um, anybody in the acrylic pouring world um, that's watching right now, there is a technique called angel wings. And this does actually produce a um, very similar look. Almost to the end here. I actually really like it. I think it's going to be quite dramatic. All right. So I think I'm going to need a lot of white so that I can keep a lot of this. So I'm going to start filling this in on the sides because. When you have wet paint on a dry surface, and even though I put paint down, um, it can and will roll under itself. So I don't want to lose any of this design. And I want you guys to see how this whole thing happens. So let me get this set flat because I don't want it to go any further. Wipe up my hands. This is going to be pretty neat. Now, if you notice on camera, the golds are kind of muted, and that's because of the flow trawl that's in it. It's kind of akin to having glue mixed into something. It kind of dulls it. But once it dries, it will uh, form a sheen. Now, here what I'm doing, I'm actually removing some of the bubbles in the paint, and it also forms a design. And you have to do this very carefully. I'm almost running parallel to this paint um, because I don't want to burn it. Obviously, the torch is very hot. And then in the end, I'll come back and go through some areas with the torch and um, 
maybe enhance some of those areas with a little bit more design. So let's see, where's our white? Let's get back around this side. It's almost imperative that you run this white or whatever color that you want right around this edge. So I really don't want it picking up very much beige. We are gonna run most of this off, like I said, but it will just help all of your paint move. And if, like this paint is pretty thin here, if it were to dry, this design would roll over itself and it would be completely gone. So at this point, a lot of my paint is down here and I want the weight of my paint fairly even. So I'm gonna shift some of this back which also moves the designs. So you have to be, you have to think very carefully about what, where you want this design to go. And right now, I just want to stretch it just a little bit. Oh, see, I need some more paint here because it's rolling. There we go. Let me do this side too. A lot of bubbles coming up here at the end. It's really going to make the design look really neat. Okay. Make sure you move your paint where you want it. Once you get used to working with this art form, um, you'll learn that it's more than just slapping some paint down on a canvas. Um, it's more about manipulating this paint where you want it to go. Um, for people that do not have the artistic ability to draw, um, mine, is, mine is very minimal, it's not practiced. Um, so I find this art a lot more appealing um, because it's something that I can do fairly quickly. Um, as long as I keep this kitchen station set up, um, you know, I can crank out a painting in, in 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and I find that's it's, it's something that really, really gives a lot of stress. So for those of you that uh, that have stressful jobs, who is that? I don't, I don't know if you have a stressful job. But if you have a job that's stressful or if you're breathing, then you, there's probably something in your life that's stressful. Why don't you see about picking up something like this? It's something that the entire family can do. My son has done one. Um, you know, use their favorite football teams, their, you know, whoever their favorite sport colors, uh, something for their room, something abstract. That way they get design in their room. Uh, you know, without it, it being feminine, you can make this totally, um, you know, totally rustic looking, totally mannish looking. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, there really aren't any constraints like that. And again, you're just moving this paint around. Just, just always think about where the heaviest part of your paint is because that's the part that's gonna move. And if you have any paint on your fingers and you move them over your art, it will drip on your most favorite part, believe me. Okay. Actually, I really like this method um, because it's giving me these layers that I love. And, um, you know, if, if, if any of you have been watching me for a while, I've been trying to achieve a uh, mountain look for the cabin. And I'm getting those nice, nice layers that I really like. And I like this so much, I may not stretch it anymore. That becomes the hard part is when to stop. Um, if I were to stop right now, I would just move the rest of this white paint across the entire board. Um, I think I do want to stretch it just a little bit more. So I'm going to keep layering this white paint on there. It's actually a lot of white paint that I've gone through today. I'm going to have to make some more. But the colors in this, um, by the time I'm done glossing it, it's, it's really gonna look quite neat because um, it's a little muted right now, just like I said, because of the flow trawl. Also, anybody that's listening, if you know of any spaces in Jacksonville, uh, Clay County, or whatever that has an area that I could do classes, 
I'm trying to do a few classes. I'm really trying to meet more people um, that like this and want to learn different techniques. Um, I've been doing this since, I think April was when I started. And um, I absolutely love it, but I tell you what, I've really, really, really learned a lot just in those few months that I can share with somebody. Now, the easiest thing to do is just turn this around and start working on the other side. And I think I am just gonna stretch the heck out of it because I just want all these colors all the way across. And if you watch, um, if you watch for sales at Michaels and Joanne Fabrics, um, a lot of the girls use uh, and guys. Um, we'll use Joanne Fabrics 60% off and uh, 50% off coupons that they offer. You can use those at Michael's. Um, make multiple sales. You know, I don't think you can always um, do them back to back, but if you have to go through the line twice to save, you know, 60% on something, then do, do it. Um, some of the products as you get going, the more you do it, you know, of course, the more you love it, and then you find other products like the varnishes. Um, they can be a little pricey, so, um, you know, save that money. Go get uh, go get some coupons, save 60% off your favorite varnish to make your work look the best because I really don't consider the work done until it's varnished because it's, it's just not done. Um, it just doesn't look the same, and, and I don't like the matte finish, even if you do a metallic paint. Um, I definitely... Um, like to see that sheen. So see now I'm changing things up. I'm going to go with the black layer and see how much I can stretch off because I'm running out of white. I actually have some more white. I just don't want to make it on camera. So I could stretch this entire thing off the canvas but I do think the negative space which would be you know just lack of this other color the negative space um, kind of provides a balance. Um, some of my earlier pictures were all uh, acrylic pour and you know unless that painting is really interesting it, it's really uh, I think it's really better with some type of negative space. Oh, see, we got somebody watching. Hello. Sorry, I can't see who's there. I just see that it says one watcher. Okay, so anybody that's there, let me tell you what I've been doing. I've been working on a for sale by owner book. Now, as a realtor, why would I want a for sale by owner book? Um, and the reason is, is people are still going to try to do for sale by owner, even though I believe the percentage, don't quote me, is about only Eight, it's either 8 or 18%, I need to look that up again, um, in the realtor stats, but typically only, I want to say it's 8%, um, actually end up selling their own home. And why is that? If you've ever looked at a for sale by owner on Zillow, what is usually wrong with it? The pictures are usually horrible. The descriptions are not complete. And how do you feel? At, tell me, I would love to know. How do you feel when you see a for sale by owner? Um, if I was not a realtor, I mean, when we were looking for the cabin, I, I would not have considered a for sale by owner. Never, 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 never. Because in the, in the you know, then I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what to look for. So why would I trust a homeowner to know what they're doing? So the book is uh, basically to give them some information on what they should be looking for, things that they should be putting, um, you know, on Zillow to let people know uh, where they should be going for legal help, um, when they should be going for legal help, which is at the very beginning, in the middle, and at the end. Um, 
you should have legal advice the entire way. All right, so anyways, let's turn this around a little bit more. It's pretty wild looking. I wish you guys could see this up close. All right, so now it's just a matter of dragging this back down, trying not to lose some of my layers. And seeing if I can shove some of this black paint off. Come on, stretch, stretch, stretch. This is the hard and frustrating part because you can lose some of the things that you love the most I think what I'm going to do is help these little edges out because it's starting to stretch my paint beyond what I like. So I think what I would do in the next one, I would use bigger cups uh, so that I get more paint on this canvas. This is a uh, 18 by 24 and I needed more paint on this canvas in order to be able to um, not have to stretch this so much and not have to put so much paint on the end here. But remember, this is a very forgiving art. Um, if you don't like something, which is exactly what happened yesterday, I liked everything but the middle of a painting and I scraped it completely off and I put some more of the pour right in the middle and boom, I was done. And if you really hate the whole thing, do what I did with this one, this original canvas, walk outside, spray it off while it's still wet. And if it dries and you're just not sure if you like it um, and it dries, shit, paint over it. Most canvases that I have have been painted over multiple times because uh, a lot of times you're not sure what these colors are going to do and um, you need a test environment and really the only way to do it is uh, use a canvas or you can use chipboard which um, if you guys get into it let me know if you need to know what chipboard is. It will save you some money. Alright so now you just go around make sure all of your edges are covered. I'm going to cover that edge up over there too. Let's just get a little bit more paint coming off the end here. Turn this around one more time. And a tip for you guys, if you have anybody that's moving, and uh, you know, typically when you move, you take down all your family photos and all that, get canvases the same size as whatever they just removed and do something like this. It doesn't have to be real dramatic. Just, make, just do something to hang in the same spot so that your walls are not blank, um, especially for homeowners that have had the same paintings in the same spots for many, many years. Um, you might have marks on the wall where, you're, where the, the photos were. So just do this, it's super easy. And that way, you know, you have something hanging up there. It uh, has nothing to do with the family that lives there. And it's covered up. Because you know when somebody comes in, they're going to paint anyway. Don't cover up any damage. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying some faded paint. You can cover that up. Um, you know. But put something abstract up there. Get your family photos down so that the buyer can come in and daydream. Alright. Let's see. All my edges are touched up. I'm going to put a little white here. In this corner. And i got to stretch this back out. Just so I don't have a hump of paint there, but I want that edge covered. All right, everything's where it should be. All right, well, that is it. I hope you guys like that. And um, if you're interested in doing any classes with me, let me know, put it down in the comments or private message me, and I'll let you know wherever I'm gonna do these classes. And if you'd like to do a class that helps somebody in the community, consider coming to the one December 9th 
out in Callahan. Again, I'll send you the information. It's being held at one of my friend's churches. Um, and it's $25, and it goes to Apple Family. All right, see you guys later.